Next, we're going to take a look at decals. Decals are a great way of adding surface level detail to your scene. Now our scene right now looks great, but the issue is it's completely devoid of any sort of grime and damage on the walls. They look like they were built yesterday. So adding those in is going to make our scene look significantly more realistic and improve the quality of our visuals. To get decals, we're going to head back into Quixel Bridge. So window, Quixel Bridge. And inside Quixel Bridge, once it's done loading, you can click on Home and then select decals. This will give you all the tons of decals that you can get in the Quixel Megascan library. But in our case, I'm going to click on Home, Collections, Tutorial, and then head on over to Urban Alleyway. The reason I've chosen this is because this also has this brick texture in it. So we can see all the assets that Quixel recommends we use if we're making a scene like this. Now, in my case, we've got a range of things here. We've got materials, we've got 3D meshes, we've got plants. We want to filter this out for only decals. So it's going to show us all the decals we have here. Now I can shift select multiple mega scans like this and download them all together. So I can choose the quality I want such so as medium and then download them all in one go. And once they've been downloaded, the add button will become clickable and then you can click add to add it to your project. Now, once the decals have been added to your project, they're going to live once again inside content, mega scans, and now a decals folder has shown up here. So under decals, we can see we have a ton of decals that we can use here. Now I'm just going to show you how to use this. All you want to do is open a particular decal. So in my case, let's go with um, some leakage first. So we're going to click on leakage and then you just want to drag this material and put it in your scene. It's going to show up like this empty volume that you can move around and you can see the decal will allow you to add that detail and remove it. Now this becomes quite confusing because it's not clear what's going on. The direction of the blue arrow is where it's projecting this decal. So we're going to push this so that it's facing the wall here and you can see now we can get that seepage on the wall here, but it's also got this weird stretching that's happening because it's projecting this texture in anything that comes into this volume here. So to make our texture really thin, which is going to remove this banding on the side here, I'm going to make sure I have that decal selected. And then in the details panel, we're going to set the X value because that is a red arrow over here to a value of 0.5. This is going to make our decal projection plane very thin. And then we can go in and kind of put it on our wall like this. So you can see now it's not affecting anything else. It's only projecting across that wall there. And you can kind of go and set this up. So what we're going to do is rotate our decal so that it's coming from the roof. This is kind of seepage from the roof here. And then once you've positioned your decal, you can then simply go and choose any other one such as leakage, this one, and then use selected asset from content browser. Let's use a different one like this. You can then swap out your decals like this, right? So we can add this into our scene to make it look more realistic. So I'm just going to quickly go and show you a demonstration here. We're just going to add all these decals uh, to our roofing area over here, such as leakage, click on this one, use this. And then all these shortcuts remain the same. So alt and drag, we can use a different one here. Okay, maybe you wanna go with this one instead. You can see we're starting to get it looking a little bit more realistic with this damage that exists in our scene, right? So I'm just gonna move this maybe over here. And you may have to fight a little bit to find exactly where your decal is because that icon sometimes does get hidden, but we've got ourselves some damage on the walls here. Again, I'm going to Alt and Rotate, start working on this, this uh, third wall over here. And we're just gonna use a different one. Just try to vary things up a little bit. And you can also change the size of your decal. So you can go and once this is locked, you can make it slightly larger. So there's more grime on a particular area and then you can kind of alt and drag and then change things around like this. So again, very quickly, we're just going to go over, go my entire scene, add some decals, some damage, some seepage uh, to the walls here. And then we will explore how we can start adding some final door frames and um, a kind of a walkway frame over here. So again, I'm just going in and I'm just picking decals that work. There's no right or wrong way to do this. You just want to add a level of realistic damage to your walls here without making it seem too post-apocalyptic. Because again, 
you have to take a decision as to what your scene is trying to convey. Are you trying to convey a more horror looking aesthetic or are you trying to just show that there's uh, been some wear and tear on these walls here? And you don't have to use the decals I'm using. You can use any decals you want as long as it reaches the image or is able to create whatever you want to build in your mind. Okay, so let's uh, move this around here. If decals are facing the wrong way, they will show up black. So keep an eye on that. If you see black decals, that means they're facing the wrong way. But you can see here, we've very quickly gone and combed our scene and now everything just feels a little bit more realistic here, right? So we just maybe also do this final wall here. Make sure that blue arrow is pointed in the direction that the decal should be projecting on. And uh, maybe I'll scale this one up a little bit. Okay, so yeah, you can see a level of grimy. I do feel this one's a little intense. So we're gonna go try and find where that decal is. And if you can't find it, you can always search decal here. And then this will let you cycle through all of them. So this one does feel too, too intense. So maybe I'll just put this on the corner here like this. In fact, maybe we'll change out that asset, so. Yeah, this is something a little bit more subtle. Right, so we've got all our decals in place. Our scene's looking great. A little bit more realistic now with that, with these imperfections on the upper area here. And now what we're gonna do, just to wrap up our acid dressing phase, we're gonna add some windows in here. And we're also gonna put a door frame in here along with a door. So again, I'm gonna go back to content, filter for static meshes and search frame. And you will get these door frames here. Now the ones that come with the Edith Finch kits are slightly taller than what the asset uh, the assets that we've got from the architecture kit. So I recommend just using this SM door frame here. This is gonna fit perfectly for your door frame. And then of course you can go in and change the material on this later, but this is gonna fit perfectly with your architecture pieces. We also have an SM door here. Again, the Edith, the Edith Finch doors are slightly larger, so you may have to scale them a little bit, but I'm just using the Unreal Engine doors here because they work quite well with my uh, with the assets, with the architecture pieces we've got here. You may need to, as you can see here, the uh, position of this door is not lining up perfectly. You may have to put snapping off to get the door to fit exactly where it needs to be. All right, so we've added a door in there. We've added a door frame in there as well. And now let's go and also add some window pieces. Again, I'm just using the uh, windows that you get from the Unreal Engine's, the SM window frame here. However, if you do want to use some of the windows from the Edith Finch kits, such as this one, you may have to scale it and it might lead to some issues. But again, it's your first project in Unreal, so I guess some level of liberty is okay. So in this case, just going to scale it one up here, one like this. So we've got this window frame in position and then Alt and drag to create another copy over here, right? So we've got two windows now in place. With that done, We've done, we've explored decals, we've done our decals, we've dressed our scene up, we've placed some mega scans in, we've placed all our assets in, we've even got a roof in. So at any point in time, you can scroll for that um, that eye icon that will appear closed in the details panel over here. So I'm just scrolling through it. You can see this is the roof. So we can put the roof on, and you can see your apartment is now starting to take shape. You've got this nice looking environment taking shape here. So in the next video, we're going to actually explore you know, daytime lighting and also nighttime lighting inside here. So interior lights and also using the sun sky system to light your scene as if there was no lights on and just the sunlight is illuminating the scene. And also if, they, if it was more of a nighttime scene and you had lights on inside.